Hi, I'm Alan from Bay Lily Beltons, and today in our next how-to, I'm gonna be teaching you everything we know about using pegs to put your bell tent up. When we're putting a bell tent up, we use three types of pegs. We have these two pegs that come with the bell tent from the manufacturer. These ones are normally used for uh, the ground sheet, as you can see here. We then get the larger, chunkier ribbed peg, and that's for the guy lines. Uh, that's because that peg's ultimately more important. If you think about the nature of a bell tent with its single pole, it's actually the guy lines that are keeping the tent up. The ground sheet pegs are just keeping the ground sheet down and keeping it looking pretty. These are the ones doing the work. However, there's also another peg we use. We use rock pegs. They're chunkier. They're essentially 10, 12 inch nails with a bit of plastic on it. And they're just chunkier, more hard versions of that one. Um, what you can do, you can actually just swap all your pegs out for rock pegs if you like. Just be aware that they do come in different diameters. And if you get the fatter ones, not all the fatter ones are green. They may not go through the eyelets of your ground shoe. These are readily available on Amazon. I think we, you know, when we get them, we sort of get 50 for 20, 30 quid, something like that. And so they're really good to hand have with you or just swap your pegs out if you wish. We also have a variety of hammers. Look, this is not rocket science. These are the ones we use. We have a 32 ounce rubber mallet. We have a 16 ounce rubber mallet, a smaller version of its big rubber. And then we have a lot heavier lump hammer that we use when the ground's a bit harder. Generally, we use the 32 ounce. If you can handle the bigger hammers, you bang the peg less, the bigger the hammer. That's what it boils down to for us. The less we have to bang the peg in, the quicker we get the tents up. But, you know, pick what's right for you, what you want to use. Or a lot of the tents nowadays are coming with a mallet within them. They're all perfectly fine. There is an old scouting rule we used to have that you only use, you know, metal hammers on metal pegs and everything else. It still exists. It's just we live in a world where, you know, compounds like rubber are a bit more hardy and can last longer. And we don't have the wooden mallets we used to have when I was a scout with our wooden pegs for our patrol tents. Anyway, um, we also have a peg puller, interestingly, for pulling the pegs out. There's a couple of reasons we, we use this. One is it saves our hands. When we're doing 10, 20 tents a weekend, it just saves our hands. The other one is it saves the tent. What I've seen before is people yanking on the material and that can rip the tent. So by just using a peg puller, then it just puts the force on the peg and on the puller and not on the tent. And likewise with uh, the guy line ones. What you might also find on the guy line ones is they may be trickier to pull out with the guy line under tension. So by releasing it and pulling it out in the angle it's in, then it's gonna come out easier. Right, it's good we took it out because now we can bang it back in. So as always, I like to wear gloves, I like to look after my hands and I don't like getting dirty. It's just the way I am. So there's a couple of things when banging a peg in. Firstly, you should always try and put your peg in at 45 degrees where possible. If you put it straight in or just off straight, and we see that a lot on the guy lines and um, the ground sheet, when you pull the guy line, that peg can just come straight up. Whereas at 45 degrees, it's less likely to come out of the ground, um, you know, unless we have some of the storms we've had recently, in which case it should just shouldn't come out. The other thing to bear in mind is a lot of our pegs are well used and I know a lot of you belt and campers and glampers, some of your pegs are going to be well used as well. There's a couple of different techniques to bear in mind. So actually let me pull this one out. When you're putting it in, you want to go in at 45 degrees as I said, like that. If you hold it at the end and just bang it, it can pivot and wobble about, especially if the ground's a bit hard or a bit stony. So what we find really handy is if you put your hand around the peg, that's where the gloves come in handy, it gives the peg support and it's less likely to bend. So there we go. Another handy hint is if you're finding the peg bending is lots of little taps. So once again, let's line it up and lots of little taps like that. And then it can go in and hopefully make its way through any mounds of earth. If there's a big flint or a big stone in there, it's not gonna go through it anyway. But what you can do once again, you can either move it around within its area to try and get it, move the tent totally, or change the angle. You know, that's not a problem because that's a bit that's steeper, sharper, and that's still going in fine and will still be secure. Right, 
So they're the peg hints and tips, 45 degrees, using the right pegs where you want to, no problem upgrading all pegs for rock pegs or carrying some rock pegs, and making sure they go in at 45 degrees, and if they're bending, grab them, or lots of little taps, or both. Oh, and a peg puller to take them out. Right, one last thing. When I'm banging it in, you can see the guy line there. As soon as it's nearly in, I move the guy line into the crook of the peg. Therefore, that keeps the guy line clean, which I know you all like. And I do it like that, and then a nice pull. Oh, it's and then up back into the crook. Thank you very much.